Hey guys, Thomas Yap here and Thomas Drives and today is a good day because we're going to see this beautiful car here from Lexus. Yes, it's the LC500. God, just look how beautiful that car is. Look at that. Man. And it's such an impressive car already. Such a treat to see. But today, something much more special is happening because it's not, I'm going to see not only the LC500, but it's the premiere, the, the review of something even more freaking awesome. <laughs> yes, how can you get more awesome than this car over here? You put on a convertible on this car over here. So we're gonna go inside there and take a look. What's the deal with? What's the deal with Lexus LC500? So you're probably wondering why you're looking at this guy over here versus this beautiful Lexus LC500 convertible. And I know that's a good looking thing, but <laughs> I'm pretty good looking as well, right? But the point why I'm doing like, uh, this video like this is because, well, there's a few. The first one is I was starstruck at the event. Um, I mean, it was a gorgeous looking thing when I first saw it in the flash. I just couldn't believe how good it looked. And given it was my first ever media invite, uh, I spent most of my time producing subpar content because I was just checking out the car, right? And I thought it didn't do Evo Malaysia Team Justice and Lexus Malaysia. So I thought it's better for me to reproduce the content in such manner, right? And the second reason is that I did my recording on my iPhone versus my camera because my camera's memory card wasn't formatted well. And again, um, it's, not, it's not that the, the video wasn't good, but there was a lot of echo in the space and I thought, again, not such a great quality, but the show must go on. Hence, we're doing it like this. So to truly appreciate the Lexus LC500, and in fact, any car, I think it's important for us to understand how it came about. See, while most people look at a car and look at the performance and the driving experience, the, the numbers and stuff, the way I see cars, cars have in history, have um, a bunch of decisions that were made before. There's a story to tell and I think it's important for us to understand that story, how it affected what we see here today to truly appreciate the car. So let's talk about that. Lexus in 1983 was born in the USA, and I know most of you would think, and most people already know, it's a Japanese brand because it's created by Toyota. But most people do not know is that actually it's created for the US market. See, there were a lot of Toyota users in USA, and most people love that car because it's reliable, it does the job well. But see, there's a problem over here. These people who own Toyotas, they wanted something better because after owning a car for a while, these people who were now baby boomers. You know, they would have a better, acquire better status of wealth or want a better quality of life. And they would look around, but there's no real upgrade for the Japanese marks. So eventually they succumb to the likes of BMW, Mercedes and other continental brands. Well, Toyota realized there was no such uh, brand for this market. They created Lexus. <laughs> so Lexus was created for the baby boomers. They wanted something that was comfortable, it was upmarket, but also have the Japanese reliability, right? And that's how Lexus was born. Now, why does that matter? Because we will see how this actually evolved into the sports cars they created and how it actually affected the success of it. In 1991, Lexus decided to create their first ever sports car Grand Tourer, which is the SC400 and the following year, the SC300. Now, unfortunately, this car didn't do as well as Lexus would thought or the world would think. It's not because it was a poor engineering exercise. In fact, it was really well engineered and it had some amazing engine. The engine in the SC400, the 4-liter V8, had around 250 horsepower during its launch and it became up to 290 depending on which year you buy. But the V8 was recorded and was told to be one of the most reliable V8s. And even the straight in line 6, which some of you may know or may not know, is actually the legendary 2JZ engine. The engine, yes, that's in the Toyota Supra, that's inside 
the SC300. So they had great engines and they handled pretty well and it was comfortable and they had beautiful interior, over-engineered interior comfort. But why didn't it do well? Well, in my opinion, it's the, the way it looks. It kind of lacked the dreaminess that sports cars needed to have. See, sports car is not an a rational thing. It has to be somewhat emotional. It has to be somewhat transformative as an experience. And I feel the looks of it and the badge just didn't really bring that. I mean, look at that. It just kind of looks like a Toyota on two doors, you know. So the conclusion is the Lexus LC500's predecessor, the first generation, the SC300 and 400, didn't quite do so well. Now, did the Japanese give up? Of course not, right? They, they were determined to take on this market over here because there were a lot of people who were entering the midlife crisis, wanted something more sexy, something to make them feel alive and feel new. <laughs> not that I understand midlife crisis and no offense to those who have midlife crisis, but um, that was just my presumption. Horrible joke. But let's talk about the next generation of the Lexus SC, okay? So this is rather important because at this generation, they created the SC430 and it was the first generation that had a convertible top, which is how it led up to today's LC500 convertible. Okay, so this time they paired it with a 4.3 liter V8 that produced around 288 horsepower. More power this time. But a lot of people describe driving the SC430 to be a little underwhelming and I can see why because Lexus wanted to create a car that was an all-rounder and geared a little bit more towards comfort. In fact, the steering feeling was a common complaint among car enthusiasts. A little bit dead, doesn't tell you much. So you can't really take this car on a spirited drive and engage your senses that much because it was built to be smooth. It was built to be comfortable. It was built to take you from point A to point B, you know, no, no fuss, you know, no hassle, feeling relaxed. And of course, you want to do it in a reliable package, which they did. So the Lexus built a car that was, that achieved what they wanted to achieve. But the problem was, it just lacked that dreaminess that a sports car would have. And in fact, the looks, I think it looks like the Lexus SC, the first generation SC 300, 400, you know, but it looks like the, it melted <laughs> like a butter. So it started looking a bit softer. You know, so I've never driven any of these two cars before, but my continuous research has told me the same thing again, underwhelming performance. So at 2008, because of the poor sales numbers, they decided to ax this whole project. Yes, they decided to put it in the grave. And most people would think that this is the end of it, right? But no. It wasn't the end of it. In 2011, Lexus shocked the world by producing a supercar. Now, this is kind of weird because just a couple of years and since the inception of the Lexus brand, they didn't produce great GT slash uh, sports cars. And they are telling the world, we're going to produce a supercar. So most people doubted that, right? And they produced the LFA, which was mind blowing. This car had a 4.8 liter V10 that sounds freaking insane. And in today's standard, I believe this car still sounds, have one of the best sounds in the world. I mean, listen to this. It sounds like a banshee screaming down the road and it, it almost sounds like an F1 car, okay? So the Lexus LFA was launched in 2011 and it shocked the world and kind of tell the whole world that we can still produce performance car. And in 2012, they revealed the LC Coupe concept, which again shocked the world because now the design language started to look like something desirable. And if they, and, and at this point, if they can produce engines like the LFA and they can produce the looks like the concept, all right, LC, Maybe Lexus has a chance in coming back again at getting a hold of this sports car segment. And now before I jump into the LC500, we're gonna take a little slight detour away from this because there's another important event that contributed to this LC500 convertible here. The Lexus RCF and the GSF. And what's important about this is that they waged in 
a 5 liter V8, which is called the 2UR GSE. Now, why is this engine important? Because this engine is what they use to put into what we see today as the LC500, the LC500 convertible. And of course, the design language over there, you can see how it carried forward into the LC500 today. So we spoke about the RCF, we spoke about the 2UR GSE, that amazing 5-litre V8. We talked about the LFA, we talked about the SC, all right, the success and the failures. How does it all, the more important question is, how does it all come together? And a more critical question, does it work? Well, in my first impression and walk around in this car, feeling the exterior and the interior, I can see this. I think it works. I think it really, really works. Okay. So let's start with the looks. It now finally looks like something that is actually desirable. I mean, look at that. Look at that. Look, the front, the grills, the side angles, the rear. I think now this car is something that would sit on the same car park with Ferraris, Lamborghinis, and it would look the part. Finally, we have something that looks desirable. And the next thing is the engine. The engine, of course, the 2UR GSE is an amazing engine, and the exhaust sounds so freaking incredible. I mean, listen to this. Right? <laughs> you can just, you can just wrap that all day. And, what I really like about this engine is that in this day and age, everybody tries to you know, uh, do force induction, they, they create smaller engines, and turbocharged, etc. This guy decided to keep it 100, keeping it real, and just leave it naturally aspirated. Now, this engine produces up to 470 horsepower, and 0 to 100 happens in 4.9 seconds in the convertible body. Now, could it be faster? Well, yes, some other cars like the M850 from BMW or the GT from the Mercedes would do better. But hell, I mean, how much faster do you really want to go in these cars like this? <laughs> but the more important part is it has an engine that performs. Now, let's talk about the drive. Now, I never really got to drive this car over here, but from a lot of my research with other journalists, they say it's an amazing car to drive. In fact, some of them quote, it felt less like a two-ton Toyota and it felt more like a mid-engine Porsche. Now, that's a pretty big claim to make, but I can see why they can make that claim because this factory that's producing the LC500 was repurposed from the LFA's engine. So not only you have all this equipment and technology and experience, you have people who are building the car. The parts of this car were built by what they call Takumis. And these people are the artisans, the master craftsmen. They have more than 60,000 hours under their belt building cars. And these are the people who were responsible for the LFA now translated over here. Now you have that experience in tuning the suspension. Well, another important thing to note and why I suspect is as good as what the journalist claims is that the handling of the car was actually tuned and most of the time was developed in the Grand Canyons. Yes, in Southern California in the Grand Canyons where they have curvy roads and stuff like that. So a lot of the tuning of the suspension is suited for spirited driving and now no longer it's quoted to be underwhelming and now feels like something that is responsive and would give you a lot of fun when you're driving around the twisty roads, okay? So given all of these facts, I can believe what the other journalists are talking about, the driving dynamics by itself. Let's talk about something that's far more important, the purpose of this car. See, the SC was built to be something that was comfortable to cruise around. Did they achieve it in this car, the LC500, even with the uh, suspension and driving dynamics tuned to be more sporty? Well, again, it's reported to be really comfortable, but more importantly, something that I get to attest for myself is the interior. The standout piece of this car is not the exterior only, it's not the engine sound, but I feel the interior. It is such a well-built quality item in the interior. It felt less like a car, and for me, it felt more like a first-class seat. Every single thing is over-engineered in there. Everything feels expensive, the soft touch material, every part from bottom to the top actually feels expensive. With the exception of the multimedia system, which I think it's a little bit, you know, not that great. But everything else is fantastic. Oh, by the way, they have this instrument cluster, which is insane. They have um, a digital board, 
but they have this analog thing that goes in and out and moves side by side. It's unseen. I haven't seen this in any other car. And to the direction of comfort and sophistication, Lexus even built, I think, one of the most quiet convertible folding mechanisms. It is extremely quiet as it folds up and down. So, what does it all come together? An extremely comfortable GT Cruiser that can still thrill you when you want. Let's talk about some other things about this car that may or may not be relevant, but I think it's important to know. Now, in terms of comfort, the only place that I feel is not comfortable because the seats in front, lux, okay, lux. The rear seats, on the other hand, not too comfortable, right? I made a joke to my colleague Bing and I said, well, if you like your friends, if you're going on a road trip, you ask them to drive their cars. But if you are going on a road trip and you don't like your friends, put them in the back seat because as you can see in this video, I'm not quite happy in the back seat. As for the boot space, of course, it shrinks a little bit more because to make space for the convertible roof. But I reckon it's good enough for a week's trip for two person. And in fact, if there's not enough space, you can always use the rear seats uh, for your luggage as well. I mean, most people who buy these cars are going to travel just with two person. So let's come back to this more important question. Does it all work? And I said it earlier and I say it again. The answer is yes. I think it's a really compelling package and it really embodies the spirit of the LFA, the RCF, that beautiful 2UR GSE engine and all the lessons they learned from the SC300, SC400 first and second generation. I think it is a magnificent piece, right? It finally looks amazing. It looks desirable, an engine that screams and performance that will tingle you and the comfort that you want in a GT car. It's a really compelling package. The only one problem, the only one problem is this. It's a Lexus. Because for the price you're paying at 1.35 million ringgit, you could get something that could be far more desirable, like a, maybe a BMW M850i or maybe a Mercedes uh, GT or maybe a second Bentley Continental, Ferraris, Lamborghinis, etc. So, if you're looking to buy this car, it's not whether it's a good car or not, because the answer is it is already a good car. The only question you gotta ask if you're gonna part money to buy this car is do you really like this car to the point that you don't care what people think? And the best way to approach this car is to be like an uncle, right? Because the Lexus was designed for the uncle, no offense guys, but <laughs> that was how it was intended, right? For the baby boomers in 1983. But you gotta approach this like an uncle. The uncle that has a lot of money in his pocket and will walk into a Hermes shop or Louis Vuitton shop with his wife in his slippers, oversized polo shirt and short pants and don't give a too ding dong what people think about him. So if you're gonna approach Lexus like that and not worry about what people say about oh, you should have gotten this, you should have gotten that, then get the Lexus. Because I think it's a really well sorted package. Thank you so much for watching this video and before I end this video, I want to take this time to actually um, acknowledge and do a shout out to Team Horizon and Evo Malaysia. Thank you so much for having me on board and thank you so much for allowing me to expand and indulge in my passion of cars and being able to share that with the world to you. So thank you so much for that. And by the way, if you want to get more um, walk around, detailed walk around of the LC500 convertible, um, the links to my colleagues' channels are below. I'm going to feature, I think Bobby's one over here. Uh, so you can check out what he thinks about the car and, and also my other colleagues in the description below, okay? Uh, if you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. It helps us with the algorithm to suggest this video to other car lovers as well. And please share in the comment below what you think about the LC500 and were you impressed about the story of this car itself? So if you like more content like this, please hit the subscribe button and turn on the bell notification so you will not miss any of the videos we put out in the future. And by the way, we don't only do car videos here on my channel, we also do via contents to support aspiring entrepreneurs and entrepreneurs. I interview other successful entrepreneurs to find out how to support you if you're an aspiring entrepreneur or entrepreneur on your journey to fulfill your aspiration. Okay, with that, thank you so much for watching this video. Keep it 100% and I'll see you in the next video. I'm out.